cyberbullying. At some point in our lives, I'm sure we have all been a victim of or have at least witnessed bullying of any kind. But what about on social media, cell phones, anything online? That's where cyberbullying comes in. People use technology pretty much 24-7 nowadays because of the increase in, you know, the advancements in it. We are connected to our phones all the time and we get on Facebook, Twitter, any other social media sites any time of the day. More and more people have been using them to communicate because it's become more of a norm. It's easier to use. You can use it kind of as a mask and hide behind it instead of actually doing the whole face-to-face -face thing. Okay, so now a little bit of background on cyberbullying. What is it? It is using electronic communication to bully others. Um, usually in form of messages that are harmful or threatening, even intimidating. Where does it happen? Usually social media, cell phones, text messaging, even through email. Who does it? Just about anybody can do cyberbullying. Any age, it most commonly happens between you know, 6th and 12th grade, youth, adolescent, teenager age. More commonly in when they get into high school, grades 9 through 12. Both boys and girls are known to be victims and bullies. They um, are all affected by it, even of all races. Girls are even more commonly prone to be bullied but are also more commonly the bullies. Some results of it, it can be, it can cause psychological damage, physical damage, emotional stress, um, even can result in thoughts of self-harm and suicide. Now, what about the social media we use? Facebook is the most common source that social media, or that cyberbullying occurs. But there's also Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, Snapchat, Ask.fm, YouTube. Some of these sites are even anonymous, where you don't even know who is saying the things that they're saying. It happens on these sites. Um, they'll comment on Facebook posts, Facebook pictures. They'll comment on pictures on Instagram. They'll even send harsh videos through Snapchat. But with Snapchat, you lose it after the allotted amount of time, so it's a lot harder to make a difference with that. It gets rid of the whole face-to-face -face aspect of it. These people that are being the bullies don't know what damage they're causing because they're behind the screen. They don't know exactly what's happening to the victims that they're targeting. It's becoming a social norm nowadays. We have the kids doing it just because everybody else is doing it and even their friends are egging them on to do it which adds the pressure. They'll even use fake profiles or copy profiles to where they'll just get a picture and make up a name and they will target certain kids and pretend to be something that they're not. Then they will flip it around and basically out them. They could be had a personal conversation and they will out that personal conversation to the public. Now that's how it's done, but what about some real life statistics that deal with it? Like I said, teenagers, um, adolescents, grades 9 through 12 mostly, even as young as 6 through 12. 52% of teens have been reported bullied at least once, 25% have reported that they've been bullied multiple times. 55% of those who use social media have reported they have witnessed bullying at some point and have done nothing about it. Now into the aspect of suicide and self-harm. Between the ages of 15 and 24 years old, suicide is the third leading cause of death behind car accidents and homicide. 
for every one completed suicide, there is 100 to 200 attempted suicides. And 38% of frequent victims have reported suicidal thinking or attempts in the past year. Now, suicide is a big issue and it is a very touchy subject. But here are some victims of cyberbullying that have committed suicide between the ages of 13 and 17. Some of these kids were barely in the sixth grade when this happened to them and that's an issue that needs to be addressed as soon as possible. Um, at least 56% of reported non-suicidal self-harm thoughts and victims of cyberbullying are almost twice as likely to have low self-esteem and thoughts of self-harm than those who are not. It doesn't only affect the victims, it also affects their family members as well and everybody around them. And it happens every day and can happen repeatedly. Now, let's hope those have helped you start to think about the issue. Now, what can we do about it? The police can only get involved so far. The laws vary from state to state. They can get involved if there are threats involved because it then turns it into a criminal, um, a criminal offense. We can help reduce it by acknowledging it and not ignoring it and basically standing up for these victims and helping and giving them support. You can avoid it, try not to fuel it, but if you do get um, cyberbullied, try to save all of the messages that you're sent because you can use it as evidence against the bullies. Now, it happens on social media, it happens with teens, boys, girls of all races. There are five important things that we can do. One, spread the word. Get everything out there and be knowledgeable about the subject. Two, acknowledge it and don't ignore it. You want to stand up for the victims if you witness it. Three, be there and show support. Four, report it always. And five, be aware of the warning signs. They will be depressed, sometimes anxious all the time. They won't want to go to school, and maybe their grades will slip. Okay, and now with that being said, there are some other things that we can do. Is we can spread the word and get out these helplines. These helplines are out there to help the kids in need, those who are having suicidal thoughts or even attempting to self-harm. They have counselors available 24-7. So if we can get the word out, stay educated on cyber safety and cyber bullying, we can help reduce this issue. Thank you.